So this is what's going to happen. We're going to end slavery a little early here because quite honestly, it's not a good look. Actually, it's pretty bad. However, it does make us a shit ton of money. So what I propose is that we secede from the United States, okay? All right, do our own little thing and still trade with the South in that little cotton game they got going on. We still make money. Also, we're going to tell black people that they can't sit next to us white people on public transportation. How we feeling? How we feeling? Comments, questions, concerns? Let me know. We've all heard of Rosa Parks, the brave black woman who in 1955 refused to move to the back of an Alabama bus, resulting in the Montgomery bus boycotts. Some of you may even have heard of Claudette Colvin, a 15-year-old girl who also refused to give up her seat on an Alabama bus nine months before Rosa Parks. But before both of these civil rights pioneers, there was Elizabeth Jennings Graham, who in 1854 hopped on a whites-only streetcar in New York City and refused to get off. Let's get into it. A lot of folks like to absolve the North from the bullshit. When I was in school, it was all about the South and how terrible it was to be black in the South, and it absolutely was. Slavery, lynchings, Jim Crow, you name it. But the reality is that injustice towards black people has always been a national issue. The North was painted as this great beacon of hope, and for some, it was. After all, many black people ran from Southern terrorism at the hands of white people to the North, but it was not without its faults. Case in point, New York City opened a slave market in 1711 near Wall Street. By 1730, 42% of the population owned slaves, which was one of the highest percentages in the country. Prominent families were slave owners, like the Schuylers. I'm looking for a slave to work, work, whoa, 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 work, whoa. <laughs> Get it? Hamilton, anybody? Mind, mind at work, slave to work, because the slavery in New York City, and those are the Schuyler sisters. Skyler sisters. In 1827, New York City grew somewhat of a conscience and abolished slavery, but complete abolition didn't happen until 1841. There were some loopholes that were a little suspect. The city profited so much from slavery that in 1861, leading up to the Civil War, Mayor Fernando Wood proposed secession from the United States and wanted to declare New York City a free city so they wouldn't lose profits from the southern cotton trade. Ew, everyone, ABC, one, two, three, eyes on me, all right? Quiet, A. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to end slavery a little early here because, quite honestly, it's not a good look. Actually, it's pretty bad. However, it does make us a shit ton of money. So what I propose is that we secede from the United States, okay, All right, do our own little thing, and still trade with the South in that little cotton game they got going on. We still make money. Also, we're going to tell black people that they can't sit next to us white people on public transportation. How we feeling? How we feeling? Comments, questions, concerns? Let me know. While black people were free in New York City by that time, segregation was real as real can be, and public transportation was a hotbed for it. Now, back to Jennings Graham. So this is what went down. On Sunday, July 16, 1854, Jennings was headed to the First Colored Congregational Church. She was running late and jumped on a streetcar owned by the Third Avenue Railroad Company. Streetcar lines were owned by private companies, and their owners and drivers were allowed to enforce segregated seating. The conductor was like, if you don't get your black ass off this horse-drawn streetcar, and she was like, nah, I'm running late. General rule of thumb, do not get in a black woman's way when she is on her way to church. She is ready to praise the Lord. He got pissed and tried to remove her by force. She put up one hell of a fight and the conductor enlisted the help of a police officer and both men physically assaulted her in order to get her off the car. Now, black people in the city were like, oh, hell nah. Her story was featured in Frederick Douglass's newspaper and received national attention. A lawsuit was filed against the Third Avenue Railroad Company, and she was represented by 24-year-old Chester A. Arthur, who would later become the President of the United States after the assassination of James Garfield. Guess what? In 1855, she won. A judge ruled colored persons, if sober, well-behaved, and free from disease, had the same rights as others and could neither be excluded by any rules of the company nor by force or violence. Now, I have some issues with the wording of that ruling, but a win is a win, I guess. Win is a win. Free from disease. What the fuck we got, rabies? She was awarded $250 and the Third Avenue Railroad Company integrated its streetcars. Now, not all streetcar companies desegregated their cars. It took another 10 years for that to happen, but Jennings' case laid the foundation. She later founded the city's first kindergarten for black children, and she operated it out of her home on West 41st Street. She died in 1901, and her story was somewhat lost to history. I've never heard about her in school, and I think that's a fucking travesty. Coretta Scott King once said, Freedom is never really won. You earn it and win it in every generation. 
100 years after Elizabeth Jennings Graham made her stand, Claudette Colvin and Rosa Parks picked up where she left off. It's sad and powerful at the same time. 100 years later and history repeats itself? 160 plus years later and we're still marching in the streets for justice and equality. At least we have these courageous black women to look to for inspiration. Happy start to Black History Month. Class dismissed.